Awesome. Okay. Everyone, I'm really excited. We have a different format today. Normally, it's me staring at my computer screen, sharing with you guys tips and tricks on uh, leveraging your business. Well, I have a co-host today. His name is also Dan, so I'm going to have to get him a Dan shirt. Yes. And his name is Dan Go, And he's going to be sharing with us the tips and tricks on um, leveraging yourself as a human. Because we all get super busy in this business and overwhelmed with time. And then we end up not taking care of ourselves. And there is an awesome, awesome quote that actually it came from you, Dan, a couple of weeks ago. And it was that um, an unhealthy man has a thousand wishes. No, an unhealthy man has one wish and a healthy man has a, a thousand wishes. And obviously the unhealthy man, his one and only wish is to get healthy. Whereas um, the person who's already healthy, they can ask for a million other things. And I thought that was brilliant, uh, really well put, better than the way I just said it. So I'll have to read it next time. Um, so what got you into your role as far as what you're currently doing now? So uh, what I'm currently doing right now is uh, I'm helping high achieving entrepreneurs transform their bodies and lives, uh, usually through the method of uh, fitness and body transformation. Uh, so they can impact their businesses and uh, the people that they love around them. And uh, what got me into this in the first place was uh, uh, there's like two stories. Uh, so one of them was is that uh, I was a really out of shape uh, kid well, well into my uh, mid-20s. I was always ashamed of my body. And then once I transformed my body, it kind of like moved all these other needles for myself uh, to transform my life, which was like switching up my careers, going into fitness and personal training, which was uh, really increasing the quality and standards of the women that I was dating. And uh, I'm married right now. And uh, I think it is, I think it did allow me all the lessons I learned allowed me to kind of like attract the kind of like woman of my dreams. So you can speak. And this also changed my mind a lot, my mindset. Now, how I got into this was uh, I actually owned a one of like the first body transformation centers in uh, North America. We built that place up. Uh, I actually just sold it in December 2018. And throughout the time of building that business, I actually was in multiple uh, business masterminds with uh, entrepreneurs. And every single time, about like 60 to 70 percent of the people that I would meet, they would always trade their health for more success in their business yeah and, uh, and that's actually one of the reasons why i took it upon myself to help entrepreneurs in the first place it's because uh, a lot of entrepreneurs are kind of binary in the way that they think they either think it's either health or my business not both right when in reality it's like when you when you actually enhance and optimize your health you can actually use it to impact your business in a large way. So it's actually both. You can be healthy, you can be at your best shape, and you can use it, the energy, the focus, the confidence to actually impact your business. And uh, one of the reasons why I help entrepreneurs is because they're my favorite people in the world. They're the ones that are making things happen in this world. And I do think that uh, as uh, the world gets older, entrepreneurs, like almost every single person out there is going to be an entrepreneur in some way, shape, or form. And these are the ones that are changing lives. Uh, I know I'm talking to uh, some real estate agents and I'm into property myself. And I know that uh, for a fact you are changing lives by putting people into houses, finding them houses, helping them sell their houses, uh, helping them find properties to invest in. So anything that I can do to kind of like help entrepreneurs get better health so they can impact their businesses, that's, that's essentially what, what I'm here for and what I'm passionate for. That is awesome. What's cool about helping the entrepreneurial space as well is um, the reason why they became entrepreneurs and self-employed is so that they had the time freedom. And then the thing is, is that they're at the uh, building of building stage of the business. And uh, it takes a lot of um, like when a, a person becomes a real estate agent, they don't have their listing presentation done. They don't have their website set up. They don't have their follow up plans in place. They don't have a whole bunch of these things that they didn't know they need to make. And so they end up spending so much time, then they're exhausted. And it, it, it's almost like backtracking versus what they wanted to do, which is have more time in their business. Absolutely. Now, what, so you're actually almost anti-cardio, um, which a lot of people <laughs> are going to get some relief from, because yeah. I'm all about the running, but I do it more for the runner's high than yeah. anything else. Um, because when I do my run in the evening, it still sticks with me four hours later. When I go to bed that night, I can still feel it. So you should definitely take a look at doing more running, some people, if you want to get, get that feeling. But you actually transform people without cardio. So can you, what's yeah. that look like? Well, okay, so uh, I'm, I'm definitely not, uh, I'm definitely 
cardio is not my enemy whatsoever. Uh, I do think that for a lot of people, it gives them that runner's high and it gets them like really focused and uh, gives them energy actually. Uh, but what I do find with like a lot of entrepreneurs uh, and just people in general, they actually think that they have to do cardio in order to lose weight. When in reality, uh, my method, I guess you could say, is more based on making sure that your metabolism is going to be at an all-time high. Um, and one of the ways to do that is through strength training and building muscle, not necessarily spending a ton of time in the gym. And, uh, and the reason, the reason I, I kind of tell my clients not to do cardio is because sometimes people look at it as a crutch. And uh, they're like, oh, I got to do like 30 minutes of cardio so I can like burn off this uh, apple fritter that I just ate kind of thing. When in reality, it's like, hey, uh, you want to burn fat with the diet and you want to build muscle and boost metabolism with the workout. So I'm definitely not – actually, funny thing is I actually just told one of my clients to start doing HIIT workouts and to start doing cardio today because yeah. he's on a little bit of uh, – wants to get lean in about like two weeks because he's going like, to see some family and wants to see his abs, right? So, so he's on kind of like a, a little bit of a get, get fit quick kind of plan. But um, in general, I'm not against cardio. Uh, I definitely think it has its place. But uh, it's more so whenever, I, whenever anyone wants to burn fat, I always have them – hit the weights first before touching the cardio because that is going to be the best long-term investment not only for their fat burning but also for their health as well. I, so I never had the scenario where I had to lose weight. I've always been the same steady weight. Um, but I can, only I can only assume that um, some people, if they're out of shape and like soft, once they start doing the weights first, they'd probably see diff uh, that difference before uh, cardio difference. You know what I mean? I would, I would say, well, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, when I started uh, doing weights. Uh, personally for me, like, I guess uh, I just, I'm, I'd rather do sports than cardio, right? So when I first started out in the gym, I just did pure weights. One thing I realized from just starting out in the gym and actually incorporating weights was that when you, when you actually lift weights, you're actually building muscle. And muscle is about, uh, actually, fat is about three times uh, – more in size than muscle is. So after about two weeks of going to the gym and doing like these strength training workouts, I actually dropped about like two notches for my belt. And that's because, uh, you know, supposedly they say like you replace, you replace fat with muscle. Well, in reality, it's just uh, I was like gaining muscle and then I was burning a little bit of fat and the muscle was just kind of taking over. So um, a lot of people think like gaining muscle is about uh, being big and bulky. Um, but in reality, it's, a, it's actually about uh, whenever you gain muscle, it's kind of like you're gaining a pound or two per maybe – month every three months every six months depending on uh, depending on how good you are so yeah do you have a game plan for people based on their eating style like some people say you should fast you some people say you should only eat twice a day some people say you should eat 10 times a day like uh, i know that's a a vague question because there's so many different people with different goals like a a, yeah. a, a, a weight builder who's in competition would have a diff a totally different diet than uh, a regular joe realtor who's just trying to be healthy so what let's um position it for the regular joe realtor trying to be healthy absolutely so um my my or my strategy is actually to pair up the diet with their schedules right every single person out there has a natural circadian rhythm to the way that they like to live life, to the way that like, they like to eat, and also to the way that they like to sleep. Uh, what I do is I actually create a meal, uh, what do you can say, a meal schedule based on their lifestyles, and it's actually, it, it encompasses a couple things. So uh, first thing is, is like, what time do they wake up, okay? What time do they go to sleep? And also, what does their work life actually look like as a result of that? So, uh, so let's use you as an example right now. Okay. All right. So uh, what time do you wake up? Usually around nine. Okay. And then what time do you usually go to sleep? Mm, 1230. Okay. So in terms of, uh, in terms of your particular schedule, we would always make sure that we're scheduling your meals at least like, and my dog just like, uh, is just shaking himself in the back. But, um, you would schedule your meals about three hours, at least three hours before you go to sleep. Because if you eat like right before you go to sleep, what happens is, is that uh, your body actually, uh, your body actually kind of, it doesn't really get good quality sleep as a result of you eating right before you go to sleep. So that's number one. Right. Number two is we give you uh, from there, we actually create something we call a time restricted, uh, time restricted feeding time. And we give you anywhere between like six to eight hours. 
So let's just say you have your last meal at about uh, 9 p.m. or even 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. You would have your first meal to be around like 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. and then have you have a middle meal around like maybe four or five. And then that's how we start. And what right. happens usually is after, after someone actually does a regular schedule of feeding, about one to two weeks, there's an adaption period. And it's not about following the schedule dogmatically. Your body is actually going to tell you when it likes to eat and when it doesn't like to eat, which is funny. So I'll give you an example. Uh, so Cody, he actually does, uh, he actually does Facebook ads. Uh, he goes to sleep around uh, 11 p.m. He actually wakes up around, I think it's like 6 or 7 a.m. And mm -hmm. then I gave him a meal schedule or a simple meal schedule of uh, 11 a.m., 3 p.m., and uh, I think it was uh, 7 p.m. What he realized after actually following the schedule for, I think it was about like three or four days, is that he didn't even like the middle meal. So he only wanted like two meals a day. And right. he found that out. And he actually found that out through following the meal schedule. So one of the things he asked is like, do I have to have the second meal? And I'm like, absolutely not. Follow where your hunger takes you. Right. So um, it's not like the Buddhist saying where it says, uh, go to your extremes and then you'll find your balance. So what happens is, is that, yeah, when you, when you follow a schedule, then your body's going to actually tell you when it gets hungry. And this is what I call kind of like the circadian rhythm of eating. So all you're doing is just following your circadian rhythm of, uh, of sleeping, and that will dictate when you like to eat as well, sort of. And then, yeah. I feel like um, bored eating kind of takes over some people, especially if they, yeah. like, unplug, turn on Netflix, and it's like they binge maybe two episodes, and they're like, oh, one more. And they're like, oh, well, I got to eat something. I'm just bored. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like a weird little programming happening. It's a, well, it's based on a couple of things, actually. I find that emotions are really, are really prevalent when people eat. So, so one of them that you mentioned was boredom. Mm -hmm. Another one that you mentioned could be, uh, let's just say, uh, you know, watch, we're watching the Toronto Raptors, and they're in game six of the finals. They're about to win. And, and then you feel, like, you feel like grabbing some chips. Let's just say they won a championship, and you want, and, and basically what people do is, to relieve their happiness, they go and eat. They create all these, all these kind of uh, habits around their emotions when it comes to eating. Let's just say you're sad. Let's just say a deal didn't go down, right? What happens? Usually people go and grab something to eat afterwards. So I find that a lot of times with, uh, with hunger, you have to be really careful about it. Can you hear me right now? Because the air conditioning is kind of going nope. in the background. You're good. Awesome, awesome. So with hunger, you have to be able to separate it between whether or not you're truly hungry or whether or not it's actually emotion and habit, which is pushing you to go eat. And a lot of times with like, uh, I know with guys in sales, real estate, um, a lot of times when they reach for something to eat, it's purely out of uh, relieving some sort of emotion. Well, even um, just like the, during the summer at McDonald's, the dollar days, McCafe, Mocha Loca, Troca, whatever they're drinking, yeah. and it's just to kill time between the 45-minute drive to get from point A to point B. Yeah. That's actually what happened to me was um, one summer I was just addicted to those ice cap things from McDonald's. They taste the caramel ones. So good. And um, even you can be a skinny guy and still have a little fat roll, and people don't believe that or understand, but it's true. Absolutely. And um, I 100% blame those things. It took two years of drinking them like a madman for it to happen. Yeah. And then um, I finally, so that was my extreme where I went too far in one direction, and then I decided to pull the plug on everything. And so what I was saying before we got disconnected, um, I would set my timer on my phone for four minutes, run in one direction, turn around, come back. And that gave me an eight hour, uh, an eight minute exercise every day. And I made a game of it where I had to do three months of it. So I, if I missed a day, that was a reset. And then I had to do it again. And, um, but by the time I hit three months, it was so ingrained where now it's just like a lifestyle thing. So what are some of the daily habits for exercising people can do, uh, just to get started? Like, cause maybe not everybody has all the equipment, for example. Yeah, definitely. So the very, actually it's, it's funny cause, um, one of the clients that just started with me, uh, he doesn't have a gym membership. He doesn't want a gym membership and that's totally fine. So what I did was. I got him started on bodyweight workouts and like right when he wakes up, he does a, a couple of stretches just to make sure that uh, he does a couple of stretches just to make sure that, you know, like 
uh, let's just say that uh, to kind of reverse any kind of like desk related types of injuries or desk related types of chronic injuries like low back type and you know stiff shoulders and then he does a couple stretches then again to do like a quick circuit of uh, you know body weight squats body weight push-ups lunges hip bridges and also gave him a TRX band uh, the TRX band is something that you can take with him whenever he's traveling and he does a, a couple of like inverted rows and some planks and then he does like three rounds of that, ten reps each one, and then pretty much, um, pretty much just like the the most basic workout that you can do, right? And uh, and just by doing that, I'm gonna say that he actually has more energy to go throughout the day, and especially when it's like, especially when you do it first thing in the morning, it's kind of like eating. This, have you ever heard of eating the frog? Yeah, the bug. Yeah, yeah. So, so you want to get the hardest thing done first, right? So. For a lot of people, getting to the gym is like the hardest thing that they have not been able to uh, kind of like incorporate into their lives. So what I say uh, with a lot of clients is to front load your workouts and back load your calories, right? So what I mean by that is like a lot of them can't find the time to go, so I say go first thing in the morning, whether that's like a bodyweight workout or doing it in the gym or for your, in your case, it'd be like going out for a run and backload your calories, which means like, you know, save your calories for, uh, for the later part of the day, right? I still do the body work. So my, my day now looks like this. I, I don't run in the morning because I found my, my rhythm and that's for me to run in the evening. So yeah. I'll, I'll run around five o'clock every night. And um, so it'll be a, um, a 20 minute run and then a 20 minute body weight exercise. There's a couple nice. apps that are on the market. I use Work It. Um, and that's a, it builds a home based body weight exercise that I can do from a hotel. I can do from my RV. I can do from my cottage. I can do from the office, yes. um, even, and like some of the stuff. So this work at one, for example, I could say I only got 10 minutes or I only have five minutes and then it will make a little exercise for you. You won't even break a sweat, but you get into the motion of doing those push ups or whatever it has you doing. Well, the next time you do it, um, the muscle memory will start to kick in over time. Right. It's like brushing your teeth, essentially. Uh, the more reps that you do with brushing your teeth, like as a routine, the more your body's going to crave to do it. So like if you wake up in the morning and the first thing that you do is uh, say push-ups or the first thing that you do is like a squat, the more time you do it, it's, the more times you do it, it's like a Pavlovian response. And your body is just going to want to crave to get into that motion like right away. And, uh, and I, I want to say one caveat though, like for, for you and I, um, you know, you, you going for a run, that's something that you need to do on an everyday basis. It's not even a negotiable for you anymore. So that's why right. kind of like you're able to do it in the evenings. And for me, like going to the gym, um, I have to go to the gym. It's become like brushing my teeth to me that if I don't do it, then I'm going to feel, oh, I'm going to feel icky. And I'm going to feel oh, like what's, what's going on kind of thing. So, so yeah, I think with, uh, with timing and everything, just uh, choose a time that you can go that's as comfortable to you as possible. And I actually wrote this uh, down on my Facebook post before. Is like you got to have a time that is non-negotiable that is red, that no one can touch. And I always say, like, treat your workouts like, like they're flights, essentially. They're blocked in my phone. Exactly. So, like, how many times have you missed a workout? How many times have you, like, purposely missed a flight because someone's like, oh, yeah, 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 can you, can you look at this for me? Or, oh, yeah, 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 can you, can you figure this out for me? You know, you, you wouldn't, even if, a, even if a man was calling you saying, hey, I'm sorry, I got to hit this flight, right? So, right. so the same thing goes with the workouts. And these are going to be, like, one of the most important uh, – one of the most important tools to gaining more energy, feeling more confident about yourself, and uh, and just being healthier in general. Um, when I hit the rock, so I hit a little bit of a rock bottom years ago because um, it was too much alcohol, too much. Like I'd be, I was a non-smoker my whole life, and then I started smoking half a pack a day because of my one-on-one -on -one coaching. I was literally on the phone pacing in my backyard from morning to night, just helping other people solve big challenges. And the only thing I do is smoke and drink coffee. And um, so it sucked. It really, I didn't like it at all. And um, so I ended up going to the YMCA, which is a gym. And what, um, so f what I'm going to suggest is some people go to your local gym, whatever one has the biggest calendar of activities. So I, I picked the Y because what they do in one day, most other gyms would do in one week. Yeah. And um, so I made a game of it where I forced myself to try every single class, even the girly ones that you, like, you would, people would make fun of you for, um, the, all of them. I did every single class and it, it made me find ones that I really liked that I didn't even know would have been something up my alley. And um, but, uh, so that was that reset thing where I said I had to do five a week. And, 
and if I missed a week, uh, five, then I hit the reset button. And mm-hmm. I didn't hit my goal until I was able to do that for three months. But nice. by the three, I, it was already a habit way before the three months. I'd say like a month and a half in, I was already noticing an improvement. I was liking getting out of my house and being active and actually um, seeing people face to face and not scare, staring at a computer screen. Like, I, I like video games. Um, if I was to choose to watch TV, a movie, or play a video game, I would choose the video game because I have control and it, it stimulates my mind more. What kind of video games do you play? Oh, any of them. Um, yeah. So my favorite is um, a team-based one where it's like four-on-four four, because I like okay. the cooperative strategy type of thing. Nice. And um, so definitely people should go to your local gym. And uh, what I did was I just got a calendar. And it had like 30 or 31 days on it. And literally all I had to do was I put, um, a, oh, I might have it in my office there. Hold on. I'm going to see if I got it. One second. I do. And that was easier than I thought. So I grabbed like this calendar and literally all I did was write what I did each day. So you can see I have two X's on that month. Nice. And then this one, oh, that, what happened there? I got a whole bunch of misses on that one, so I would have had to hit the reset button. And, and um, can I just add something in here, or something yeah. that I'm just seeing that that you did that is so super key, which yeah. is the fact that you tracked everything. So you track the actual. You actually wrote down the classes you did. And one of the yep. things that uh, one of the things that uh, gets uh, gets people going is just like tracking, tracking how many workouts that you do, tracking like what classes you went to. Even tracking your food to a certain extent, but we, we won't get into there right now. But yeah, just tracking it and actually writing it down, it makes it so real for you. It actually makes I, you want to keep on doing it. Totally. I, I, tr- I wrote the name of the activity and either the distance or the time. Usually just I, wrote, I based it on time. But like most of these, I did three in one day, three different things in one day. So that's like, I saw a huge improvement. I never... Um, was trying to cut weight and I also wasn't trying to bulk up either. I just wanted, I want to be um, like active when I'm 90. Yeah. That's my goal. I just, that's what I'm up to. And so I think if people grab just a, a regular blank calendar and you hit the reset button, if you met your goal should be like five. My goal was um, seven, seven days a week. And I gave myself slack where I could miss one day a week. So that meant four days of the month I could, whoops, but the rest of it, um, if I didn't do it, I hit the reset button and I started a whole new calendar. And, oh, here's another key tip with the calendar thing. A lot of people think calendars are based on the first of the month. Man, all you have is the current time, this present moment right now. So tomorrow, start a new calendar and it's not starting on the first of the month. It's starting with whatever the day of the month is that you're on and go from there. It does not have to be like a January 1st, I'm going to wait until the new year. Yeah. Tomorrow is your new day, right? So don't wait for the new year. It takes too long. Absolutely. And one thing I'll add to that is that uh, one thing that really helps people is if they already love something, if they already love something physical that they stop doing, whether it's like playing soccer, playing basketball, uh, playing a sport, or, or doing something, whether it's even running, go towards the thing that you love that's physical first, right? So at least you enjoy it. So at least you get that ball rolling. And one of the, one of the things that Reminds me of that is like I, I too used to smoke uh, way back then and I was like severely overweight. And one of the things that got me back or got me into fitness was actually my friend invited me to a pickup basketball game and I loved basketball back then. I loved playing it. I don't play it much anymore, but but just going through and playing uh, this team sport and having fun and being with people, that's what actually got me back on the path to uh, to losing weight and, and to even eventually into the gym as well. So, so yeah, do what you love first. That's a cool idea. So even real estate agents on this call right now listening, you could also almost turn this into a business opportunity where you say, okay, I'm going to do a 5K run and it's to raise ch- um, money for this charity and you can make it public. So now you have social media content you can post about. You're being accountable yeah. online. Plus you're, you're working towards like somebody else's why, like mm-hmm. raising money for that kid or whatever it is. And um, the pickup basketball, you could do your own little um, pickup like the, there's um, one of the franchises I was talking to them last week, and um, they do um, uh, amateur hockey, but they do it around the world. So they'll go to South Africa, they go to Europe, they go to like all these different places in the world, and they play hockey and raise money, and all the money goes to the local community of wherever they're playing. And they've been all over the world. And it's just like some random little gu- like amateur group of guys here in Regina, actually, because this is where I am today. And 
Like, dude, that is so cool that you guys are doing that. So you could even call and contact your own database and set up your own little charity fundraiser. There's one in Toronto um, for the Special Olympics, and um, it'll be teams. And um, I forget the name of the charity, but um, it'll be two handicap athletes and then like uh, five to eight um, volunteers that are helping create the team. And um, every, they play touch football, basketball, track, uh, um, f frisbee and there's a, a celebrity on each team as well and it raises so much money but it didn't start that way it started really small with just like a core group of guys and girls setting up this little thing so you could do your own little community involvement base it around some sort of activity and now it's not just about you awesome awesome yeah. So what gets you excited about the business model you have? Because there's a lot of people that help people with losing weight and getting in shape. So what excites you about what you're up to that stands out? Uh, what excites me is uh, what excites me is actually helping entrepreneurs make uh, real big breakthroughs uh, when they connect health and fitness to their impact in the world. Um, every single person is different, and I actually say that. Uh, when it comes, I specifically am in the weight loss circle. So uh, when we talk about weight loss and we talk about body transformation, it is math and it, it is accountability all wrapped up in mindset. So when I am able to make breakthroughs with my clients and actually uh, kind of break through their, their own self-image blocks on, and what stops them from actually achieving the body and health goals that they have, that to me is the biggest fulfillment. Um, I don't know why it is but every single time that my clients drop weight on the scale i get i just get happy about myself because i feel like i'm doing my job and then part of me actually knows that when i'm doing this i'm increasing their health i'm making them better for their families that's number one i'm making them better for their businesses more present more energetic more focused i'm actually helping them make more money because like i you know i, I every single time i help an entrepreneur uh lose weight it is just it's automatic that their businesses start exploding after that because you just you just have more confidence in yourself right mm -hmm. that's just true when i done. when i did that whole ymca thing and i did this where i was like committed to doing at least one a day and I, i'd only miss like four months type of thing yeah. that the business hit a tipping point around the same point yeah. My, so what gets me excited is just uh, is helping guys who are already making an impact on this world, uh, helping them be the best versions of themselves and reaching their full potential so they can actually give more of themselves to everyone else. And I actually do have this little saying, I'm like, you got to be selfish in order to be generous. And a lot of these guys, they, they sacrifice their health because they want to give more to others when they don't realize that if they were selfish for their own time and their own health, they would actually be able to give way more to others. So yeah, man, like uh, when it comes to results, uh, that's the thing that gets me up. That's the thing that makes me happy. And then uh, sometimes I take it too emotion. I get too emotionally attached because like uh, even today I saw one of my clients, uh, his weight like jumped up like five pounds. And then I was just, I, I like texting my clients like, did you like, uh, did you have like a, an, five burritos yesterday or something like that like what what went on you know and uh it's fun you know? so it's always fun kind of like helping them work through these uh, little things and i just want to touch base um we keep mentioning the word guys 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 you oh, so, yeah. guys and girls as well and it's, it's just like a commonality of how you're describing. yeah so. i i tell, i actually like I, I know probably i shouldn't be saying this right now but or i shouldn't be saying but i sometimes i call you know my girls guys i'm like hey guys 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 like everyone yeah. like has a whole kind of thing yeah I knew uh, this we I, I'm using it as a gender, gender neutral type of term. So, when you help a client, yeah, I got that totally. When yeah. you help a client, does it uh, matter if they're local to you or uh, virtual, cross country, cross? Uh, doesn't matter if local to me. Um, a lot of what I do and a lot of like the support that's offered is actually through, uh, is actually through technology. Um, pretty much like semi daily, I send out texts to my clients and I'm just like, hey, what's up? You need any support? What's going on? I saw this on uh, what my software is it's called Trainerize. So I saw this. Uh, what's going on with this? Uh, do you wanna do you wanna like work out anything? And usually it's like usually we're texting back and forth or we're or we're calling each other on the phone. And I do have some like uh, clients that are local to me, but uh, but I'm helping everyone from like Austin, Texas to California to Vancouver to uh, Toronto. 
Nice. You yeah. know what? I, I think one of the reasons why the business for people explode after they really get into something like this is um, the, the clarity of the mind and the energy that the exercise creates. It's just like a trip, such a win, win, win to be yes. doing this sort of thing. I totally look at exercise as meditation. It's my version of meditation. Like Absolutely. I can sit still and quiet um, for hours. No problem. I've done it before. And uh, meditation is not a hard thing for me. It's easy for me to turn my mind off. It's easier than most people make it out to be, at least. And um, however, I still would choose exercise version of meditation because it's just like that half hour bike ride of like the wind and the air and the birds and like the happiness that it brings me is something that I can't get just sitting on a floor. Yeah, there's just so much presence that comes with uh, being at your best self, right? And uh, one thing I do tell, one thing I do say a lot is just like energy sells. You know, like a lot of times, nine times out of 10, you know, people actually sign up with me because they love my energy, right? Confidence sells. If you're more confident in yourself and you're liking what's looking back at you in the mirror and you can take, like what I say is like a lot of people say that, uh, you know, you shouldn't but judge a book by its cover, but hey, like we all, we all have this image of our bodies and the more that we feel better about our bodies, the more we're going to feel better about ourselves and the more confident we're going to be. Right. And uh, the last one is just focus. Like the more focus that you have towards your business, the more you get ish done. Right. If you if you if you're not worrying about your health and you have energy and you have confidence and you have focus, there's so many things that you can accomplish in your business. What are some of the resources that um, you think people should lean towards? Uh, I, whether it be an audio book or a specific speaker or influencer in that space, um, a YouTube channel, a podcast. Uh, resources um do you mind if i go into like say uh maybe a couple products that would actually help them on, on yeah. a couple ends of the spectrum yeah, yeah. products too whatever that's good awesome so uh so the very first one that i would that i would recommend would be uh is going to be for sleep uh if i wanted if i had an enemy in the world and i wanted to have him at his weakest i would totally deprive him of sleep so the first thing i do with my clients is i get their sleep in order and a lot of times, uh, you know, I would say 60% of my clients are they're sleeping kind of like uh, five hours a week, six or five hours a day, six hours a day. And, um, and a lot of times they, they can actually make small tweaks to their sleep. That's actually going to enhance what they do, you know, out there when it comes to dieting, when it comes to working out, when it comes to performing in their business. So the very first thing I do is because of the advent of uh, screens and like uh, phones, I get my clients to wear a blue blockers at least like two hours before going to bed, blue light blockers. Oh, and, uh, wait, yeah, what's, a, that, what's a blue light blocker? So a blue light, so essentially, like, I, I explain it to my clients like this. When you're looking at a phone, it's emitting a blue light into your eyes. Yeah. Essentially, what happens is, is that it's like, it's like saying this. If you were to go to sleep, would you recommend me to look at the sun two hours before I go to sleep? So essentially, when you look at a blue, when you look at blue light or when blue light goes into your eyes, it's... It's tricking your body into thinking that it's awake. And this is a reason why a lot of people can't go to sleep because they're looking at screens, they're looking at their TV. So what blue light blockers do, it's like just these like regular glasses. I recommend Swannies. This is brand you can get off of Amazon. Yeah. And, um, and essentially uh, what it does is it blocks the blue light. And whenever my clients wear blue light blockers, they're like, uh, dude, usually they go to sleep at like 12 or 1. They're like, uh, it was like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and I needed to go to sleep like right away. Because essentially, you're just blocking the light from going in your eyes. Do you suggest that they wear those in the evening or all day while they're working? Uh, only, uh, I would say like two to three hours before going to sleep. If they're looking right. at a screen, yeah. If Well, yeah, after looking at a screen, which I'm guessing like 90, 95% of people are doing before they go to sleep. Or they could just stay away from screens their, their entire, uh, pretty much like for two to three hours before they go to sleep, which, which might be... A, like for some people, they tell me that's like impossible. But anyways, so the first thing I would get is Swannies. And that uh, counts for watching TV. That counts for watching TV as well. In the dark. Cool. Yes. All right. Yes. So that's the first product I would get. Uh, in terms of like any podcasts that I would recommend, uh, I would definitely recommend uh, Tim. Like I love Tim Ferriss' podcast. Uh, I mm. think he does have a lot of like great fitness guys on there. Uh, if you need some motivation, there's a guy named Joppa Willink. And I would uh, go straight to like this, uh, the first, the first podcast that he's ever done that kind of like lights a fire under your, uh, your butt a little bit. What's, um, what's his name? Jocko Willink. I'll put it in the, the chat actually. Yeah, so, she have. 
can we create a list? We'll put this in the show notes so that people can, um, like, we'll actually find the podcast and link it to yeah, them. Yeah, sweet. Okay, Tim so, Ferriss, uh, so Tim Ferriss, if people don't know, he literally changed my life. His book, The 4-Hour Workweek, 100% yes. transformed my business um, as a digital entrepreneur and as a, as a business person in general. And, but what I really like about Tim is how many different directions that guy can go and master it and like, um, not just live a life but create a life. And he, he's really cool at, at doing that. And he's one of the guys that inspired me to, to, to do the same thing and um, kind of create my own flow. Same here, same here. So um, the next thing that, uh, this is actually what I get my clients, is uh, this, I get them a glass gallon jug of, uh, it's just a glass gallon jug. Yeah. And then I basically tell them, is like, fill this up every day. You're going to take one liter in the morning. You're going to take another liter with your first coffee. And you're going to take the rest of this jug throughout the entire day, at least like three hours, at least until three hours before you go to sleep. So I got a trick. Times, yeah. I got, I got a trick for your clients. Awesome. If any of your clients have a hard time with drinking that amount of water, because like they, a lot of people just like drink a bunch of coffees, yeah. some pop, and they really don't drink water. So it's a hard thing to just say, hey, now you got to start drinking a gallon a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I ended up um, getting vegetables and washing them all up, and I I'll eat the vegetable and drink the water, and it kind of creates like a little bit of taste for the water. Yeah, I don't. So that's the only thing I don't. I don't like eat a steak and then drink it down with like I don't um, eat and drink at the same time, except for with vegetable and water. And um, I'm eating way more vegetables, which is a positive for anybody. Yes. Plus, I'm drinking way more water as well. And I do the same thing. I have a big, um, a big thing that I fill, and I know I have to empty it every day. Yeah. There's uh, something that you can. There's actually balls that you can get where you can actually infuse the water as well, uh, with like fruits. <sighs> I tried those and it was, they were yeah. gross. I found yeah, okay. it a mess and gross and too much. Con but with the, the vegetable, you just eat the whole thing. It's like gone. No cleanup, no anything. Sweet. Oh, good so, uh, so, yeah. So, I would say, well, the glass gallon jug, uh, that is super huge. Um, I'll just tell you exactly what I get my clients anytime they, they, they sign up with me. Uh, I give them pretty much like the Tesla of scales. So, like... Let's just say if you were to want to gain weight or if you want to like, well, especially if you want to lose weight, there has to be some sort of metric that you can track every day. And I, I think like a lot of times, like let's just say for yourself, um, if you're in sales, you track your sales metrics every day. And then that's what allows you to help them grow. So if you're on a weight loss tip or, or anything like that, then you would actually track your weight on an everyday basis. So what I do is I actually give them uh, this scale called the Widings Nokia Smart Scale. And it's actually what I found to be kind of like the Tesla of all scales because uh, it does your body water. It actually tracks everything. It gives you like graphs. Uh, is your fat, body, body fat. fat? Yeah, it tracks your body fat. It actually oh. does a really good job. Of it. Like I, I usually don't use these scales to track body fat, but I actually found this scale to be the, one of the most accurate ones to track your body fat, which is incredible. Cool. And it tracks your body water. And then uh, and it actually puts everything in a really cool type of graphical representation to show you the trend of like your weight going down a little bit, your body fat going down. So that's something that I get them as well. well but and the it, body water, is there a goal for that? Because I've never even heard of somebody tracking uh, body water. No, nah, you know what? I don't, there is not necessarily a goal for body water. I mean, there is a goal for having like less body water, I guess you can say. So if you're like tracking your water and you're anything between like 40 to 45 percent then you know that you got to get your water up a little bit i think people should be aiming for about like 55 to about 60 percent of water because our bodies should be comprised of about 55 to 60 percent of water in the first place so that's it's not like making sure that you don't get to the level where you're completely dehydrated right and that, that usually happens when people are drinking like multiple coffees and not drinking water at all does beer count because that's made out of water yeah, I think, yeah, actually, beer beer does count. Yeah, beer does count. Like, coffee's a diuretic, so that's why I say, like, that it usually dehydrates you more so than anything else. But beer does hydrate you, but then I would not take a gallon of beer uh, a yeah. day. Cause, uh, yeah. I heard the, um, I heard the, uh, yeah, it gives you a different kind of six-pack, I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, I heard uh, people in fitness, they really like that bullet coffee. I've never even had it, but I, is that something you yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Well, actually, like, so, uh, I, I watch the evidence a lot. Um, when it comes to, like, Bulletproof Coffee, it's great if you like the taste of it. Yeah. Uh, but I find that, uh, again, it just adds, like, unnecessary calories to, mm. to what you're doing. Um, people put, like, the MCT oil, again, 
evidence hasn't really like proven whether or not that actually gives you more energy as a result of putting in your coffee. Uh, there's a lot of conflicting reports, but if my clients like to do bulletproof coffee, I'm like, yo, just, just do it. You know, fit it into your calories and macros and you're all good to go. Yeah. Um, the other thing I give my clients uh, is actually a foam roller and a peanut lacrosse ball massage. So you know what a foam roller is, obviously. It's, oh, okay, yeah, foam roller. Yeah, yeah is it the big, uh, long one for the whole bag? Yeah, it- exactly. It's a big, long one, and then uh, I give them like a little, it's like a little peanut, uh, and it's like a lacrosse ball. And then what I do is a lot of times when people are feeling pains in their bodies, a lot of it is soft tissue related. So uh, especially for like entrepreneurs, I get them to roll or what we call roll out, which is like, put their butts on this ball. They can start with a tennis ball if they haven't done it before. Yeah. They put their butts on the ball and then they just work out the soft tissue uh, adhesions that they have in their butt. And this actually helps relieve a lot of tension in the lower back. If you actually just go and like massage the butt, massage the shoulders, massage the back. And, uh, and I do this to kind of like increase the tissue quality for, uh, for all of my clients so they're not really feeling pain on a regular basis. There's... Um did that reminded me not the the butt ball thing reminded me back in the day um when i had the office uh, in real estate um i got a cubicle right off the bat so they're like there's your cubicle there's your do- chair there's everything i removed the chair the very first day i started in real estate in 2007 and i built a stand and i put my computer up and i stood all day um but i would pace while i was on the phone so i got yes. a wireless earbud I ended up getting um, a balance board. So it's a flat board with like a half circle underneath. And nice. while I was doing my prospecting calls, I was doing that. And in between calls, I would get down on it and do push ups while the phone is ringing just to be active. Because sitting in the chair was like, you start slumping and slumping and slumping. Yeah. Then you're like, I hate this. I don't like my work. Yeah. But like, that, was, that affects your energy. Yeah, it wasn't work. It was play. I was just playing all day. I had um, the the squeezy ball, and I'd be like bouncing it off the wall if nobody was around, and yeah, whatever. I heard there's a, there's this term, right? So you sell standing up, you close in the chair, right? So like when you're selling and when you're going through your process, you basically need to be as high energy as possible. So whether that's like bouncing on the board and like getting like anytime that you're physical, it kind of like gets your brain waves moving a little bit. And, uh, but when you're, when you're closing, you gotta be calm as a, calm as a cucumber, so to speak. So you sit in your chair. So, so yeah, I'm glad that you kind of mentioned that. There's a comment, um, uh, about, uh, matcha bulletproof yeah. and adding MTC. It's good for the brain. So I'm gonna have to try that. Cause this was matcha yeah. that I was drinking right yeah. here. And then, uh, Yvonne, Yvonne says, I uh, hate it too. Worst thing is sitting too long. Totally. Mm-hmm. And then you end up getting up and you're like, Forget it. I'm going home. <laughs> and, then and then your back is just like wrecked too, right? Because you're sitting in a slump position, and then your low back, your lumbar is just kind of like in a in a kind of creased position the entire time for like two hours, three hours, four hours, and then your back just gets sore. Now, um, leaning towards the oh wait, was there more of your oh yeah more um, yeah so more uh, more stuff that I actually get my clients. Um, I would say. This is actually not something I get my clients. Uh, Again, this has to do with sleep. So this is very specific to people who are hot sleepers. Um, This is is essentially if like, if you wake up in the morning and you're like in a sweat, or if you like wake up in the middle of the night and you're sweating, and I was like one of those hot sleepers. So I know some, actually about 50% of my clients are. I actually got this thing called a chili pad. And the chili pad basically cools your entire bed. So so essentially think like uh, the- No power? Uh, it's, it runs on like a, it runs on kind of like this air machine kind of thing, or this like okay. one like it, it puts like cool water into your your bed a little bit under this pad, and it cools down the entire area. And I have to say like that has increased the quality of my sleep like tenfold. And wow. I sleep, I sleep in the bed with my wife, so like increased body heat just isn't like that uh, that beneficial for me. And then once I got the chili pad, it just made everything better. So. Yeah. Wow, that I didn't even know. That's cool. And uh, if you think about it, how much time do we sleep during our lifetime? So you probably should invest in a better mattress and a better uh, sleeping setup. Absolutely. Somebody says, Absolutely. what is MTC? MCT. And so MCT oil oh. is a is a type of. Uh, here, I'm just gonna write it down here. So MCT oil is a type of. Uh, it's a type of oil that's derived from uh, coconut oil. And then, um, and then, yeah, like a lot of people actually say that uh, it can increase uh, what we call like 
uh, neurogenesis of the brain. So it can actually help you repair the brain, but also kind of create new brain cells as a result of taking it in. And a lot of people actually do take it in because they think it actually gives them more energy as well. So something to kind of like look into, do your own research, obviously, and, uh, and check it out. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, right on. There you go. And then what else do you get your, suggest your clients? Uh, that's about it. Actually, the last thing I would suggest to my clients, and this is actually more so like uh, deeper in and at like the, uh, kind of like at the six month mark. So what we do is we actually get them to increase their, uh, their NEAT, which is N-E-A-T. And, uh, it's, it's just a very, it's like called non-exercise related physical activity. So we would actually give them a Fitbit and we would have them at like the four to six month mark, uh, increase the steps that they take on a regular basis and aim for about 10 K steps. I always avoid the elevator. Yeah. Do little things like that. Park your car as far as possible kind of thing. I have a huge truck, so I have to park as far away as possible. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, that works. This, yeah. Um, yeah, little step. Now, what I, don't, I only wear my Fitbit while I'm doing my bike run and exercise. I don't wear it all day. I kind of have an idea. I'm like weird like with microwaves and stuff like that, and I feel like yeah. wearing that all the time might. Anyways, I guess you're f fine with people wearing it all day? Yeah, I'm fine with people wearing it all day. Uh, we have our phones on us pretty much like all day. That's yeah, like that's a million day. times worse. So. Yeah, yeah. This is one thing that I use daily. How do I? Yes, sir. The Nutra Bullet. It's hard to read yes. with the glare. Yeah. Yeah, I can't fix that. Oh, wait. Do this. Nutra Bullet. Oh, yeah. And um, what I like about this one is because there's a whole bunch of blenders on the market, and they're really big and they take up a lot of counter space. This literally is like the size of a coffee cup almost, only it's taller. And um, this little cup screws on top of it and it makes all of the mess in this so I don't have a big cleanup because otherwise if you have the big thing, you ought to pour it into a cup and now you have two things to clean, the blender plus the cup. Yes. And um, so uh, my doctor, when I went to my doctor, I was telling him that I was doing this and, he, and then he um, made a comment about that I'm, I'm stripping away all, all the fibers because when you blend it into a liquid, it removes all the fibers. I don't really know what he was saying, but I, I just believed him. So now I don't blend it to a liquid form. I just blend it three seconds is too long. So it's like one, two, stop. And um, I have to eat it with a spoon. And it's uh, now I'm actually still chewing the food, but it, it's it's all blended up. And you can make the I have a, a video on making the best. It takes five minutes, and in one cup. So I use a bigger cup than this when I make my blender. It's uh, about twice the size. And in one cup, I put an entire carrot. I don't even peel it. I just break it up and throw it in. Even that green thing on the end, I whatever goes in. No mess. I have zero cleanup. So I throw that in. Um, the celery a quarter of a, a green pepper, whatever salad I have, spinach, kale, or whatever is in the fridge, I throw that in. Like this pear is not looking too good, in my opinion, but um, I, so I'm not going to bite into it like an apple. However, tomorrow when I make my drink, I'm just going to throw it in, uh, minus the core, obviously. Um, and then I'll do, uh, I have this. So this is just mixed nuts, and I pre-mix them. It's equal parts of everything, hazelnuts, cashews, walnuts, almonds, and it all goes in. And I'll put um, a handful of that into the cup. And then I went to a bulk store, and I made this, which is kind of hard to see. Is that flax? But, oh, dude, there is flax, hemp hearts, psyllium husk, goji berries, um, chia seeds, sesame seeds it's just all seeds and powders in here equal parts mixed up and i'll do a quarter of a cup in a banana and mango like frozen mango blend it up They're, like how much food did i just put into that cup and it's all healthy um i i love it it's five minutes awesome. and it, it replaced my coffee sweet yeah okay what's that Cool. Okay. So what's the exercise? Like once a person starts getting all the equipment and they're like, mm -hmm. okay, we got, I got to start exercising. What's a typical exercise look like for a person? Say uh, like, what do you suggest a half hour? What, what's the time that a person 
I, I say less than three hours a week, uh, three times a week is uh, kind of like the it's kind of like the sweet spot that I find with a lot of guys. Um, if you do, I'll split it up between if you are not able to go to the gym and if you are able to go to the gym. So if you're not able to go to the gym, uh, you can actually do uh, circuits at home, uh, circuit training. And with circuit training, essentially you're doing one exercise after another without stopping. Usually this uh, lasts you about, I would say like 30 seconds. And I always uh, schedule in or I always put in non-competing types of exercise that go from like, say a lower body exercise to an upper body exercise to a lower body exercise to an upper body exercise anytime that we're doing the circuit. And the reason why I do that is because uh, you just don't want to tax the muscle before before getting on to the next exercise. So I'll give you like a sample uh, like a sample workout that I actually give my clients. So one of them is a you know squats for 15 to 20 reps. The other one is a push up for anywhere between 10 to 15 reps. The other one is a lunge for anywhere between 8 to 10 reps per side. The other one is going to be uh, what we call like a renegade row, or it could be an inverted row, or it could be a pull-up, whichever one that you choose. That can be like 8 to 10 reps. The last one is going to be a plank. All right, and one thing that I would add in there would be a hip bridge, uh, because uh, a lot of times when we're sitting down uh, for long periods of time, our glutes turn off. And our glutes are actually supposed to be the strongest parts of our body. So what I get people to do is I get them to lie down on their back. This is actually one of the most important exercises other than what I call something I call a hip thrust. And you would lie down on your back. You would uh, have your knees bent. You would squeeze your glutes and bring and almost like bridge your hips up. And you would squeeze your glutes by activating them. What you're doing is you're actually pretending as if you're trying to crush a quarter with your butthole essentially just to activate your glutes. Yeah. Now, if you had time to go to the gym, uh, three workouts a week, that's it, two, three workouts a week, you're doing mainly strength training workouts. And then uh, this is going to be a little bit more on the kind of like sciencey side, but what I do is with my clients, we periodize their workouts and we also bring in something called progressive overload. So we want our clients to gain muscle. We want them to get stronger because this is what boosts metabolism in the long term. So what we do is uh, we actually have our clients go into the gym. They would do the same exercises for about a period of about like 12 weeks. They would get stronger at each and every one of these exercises over that time. This helps them like build muscle and this helps them kind of like burn a lot more fat when they don't even have to think about it when they're sleeping essentially um i think one of the biggest mistakes is uh, that people can make is actually um a lot of times like people will go into like say crossfit workouts or or whatever and they'll get like thrown this like kind of like general types of workout but they won't actually have progressive overload baked into it and hmm. progressive overload is is needed if you want to actually get make gains in any type of area, whether it's like fat loss or whether it's muscle building. So, so yeah, you have to, it's almost like you have to do the same thing over and over, get stronger at it and progressively overload the muscle. It's kind of like, it's kind of like challenging yourself in business. You have to seek out new challenges for your business to grow. Same thing goes with your body. We have to make it, make it lift a little bit more weight each and every time it hits the gym. The, in that um, work it app that I mentioned earlier, yeah. Um, it actually shows a list you can search. So you just gave a breakdown of a sample exercise. People can go to this app and search each version and it will show you how to do the motion. You Absolutely. said, um, and you can, you can create your own game plan too. So you yeah. can add them all as your own list and then do yeah. it. What, what, um, you said the hip thrust is the most hip important. Thrust. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. So, so the hip thrust is an exercise that's just come into kind of uh, popularity within the last, like, I would say like three years. Okay. So we're finding, they actually did EMG tests and these are kind of tests that show whether or not a muscle is firing off. Now the glutes are actually supposed to be the strongest part of your body, bar none, in terms of force generated. What they're finding with people, because they're sitting down for eight to 10 hours a day, they're actually finding that their glutes are completely turned off. So one of the ways to actually find this out is to just do maybe like 10 body weight squats or maybe do 10 hip bridges. And then what happens is if your quads burn before your glutes do, without like if you're just doing them regularly, if I tell you to focus on your glutes and you're gonna use your glutes, right? But if you're just doing them regularly and you do 10 squats or you do 10 hip bridges and your quads start to burn before your glutes, then you know that you have an imbalance. Your glutes are supposed to be the ones to power you up. So the hip thrust essentially is using a barbell. It goes across your hip, and then essentially you're, you're actually using progressive overload. You're adding weight to it, and you're squeezing your glutes. And what you're doing with that exercise is essentially just like strengthening the hips and strengthening the glutes. And what happens when people actually start doing this exercise 
is one, lower back pain goes away because a lot of, a lot of lower back pain stems from having either tight hips or turned off glutes because a lot of the work is being done by the lower back muscles rather than the glute muscles. The second thing it does is it actually makes you more powerful. It actually makes you more powerful in everything that you do, whether you're standing, walking. Literally, when you're like walking down the street, you're going to feel your, your glutes firing off because it's activated and because it's stronger. So uh, I, would, uh, I would search out the hip thrust on YouTube and then check that out. And then when you do it, make sure that you, you kind of activate in the way that we, that, that we uh, explain, which is every single time that you lift up your hips, you're squeezing your butt cheeks together as if you're trying to crush a quarter between the butthole. So feet, feet are flat on the floor, shoulders are on the floor, and you're lifting your... Shoulders would be on a bench, actually. So shoulders would be like uh, on kind of like an elevated surface, like a oh. bench. Okay. And then you have a barbell that goes across. Like, can you actually get this started with body weight using a hip bridges, the one that I mentioned before? Yeah. And if you really want to bring, uh, if you really want to make it stronger, then you have to bring weights into it. So what happens is that uh, you, you go across, your back is across the bench, your, uh, the bar is across your hips. You would have a pad on the bar just to make sure, like, your hips are not going to get crushed by the bar. You yeah. put some weights on either side, and then you would squeeze your hips and bring them up. There's um, two pieces because I this is a motorhome. I have to move it every city, every month. So space is a real premium in this thing. So yes. um, there's two pieces of, of three pieces of equipment that I got that I, I really like. One is um, it's a kettlebell from Walmart, and it's um, you can it's one kettlebell, but you can remove plates. So yes. you can make it a two pound all the way up to like a twenty five pound or something like that. Yeah. Um, so that's good. And then the other one was I bought the Bowflex dumbbells, which those are really expensive. You can buy cheaper versions, but it, it's one set of dumbbells that take up like this much space as opposed awesome. to a whole rack and yeah. the cost behind that whole thing. And this also. <laughs> so this is just a simple, what is this? 10 pound. This is just a simple 10 pound kettlebell. What I like about it, I don't use it like how you would normally use a kettlebell. I literally palm the thing. And while I'm on the phone, say I'm doing a coaching call, the clients have no idea I'm walking around in a circle and I just keep like just moving the weight around kind of like a, a flowing energy, nice. right? It has, nice. And um, sometimes I'll be bending over and I'm going to, I'm going to use the weight to like stretch my back out. Yeah. It, but I'm not repetitively doing the same exercise. And this yeah. is just like while I'm on the phone doing my day-to-day -day operations. And yeah. it's not like a huge thing. It's 10 pounds. You can actually use the uh, Bowflex uh, dumbbells or the uh, kettlebells to use as like uh, as for the hip thrusts. Uh, when my wife and I mm -hmm. were in Barbados and had like no access to, uh, to barbells, we literally put the dumbbells on our hips and then went and put our bodies uh, across the bench. And then we used that as like a weight to bring our hips up. That is awesome. Um, we're right at the, the one hour mark. So yes. what I want to do is, um, can you type out your contact info so that people yes. can reach out to you? When we do the recording, Shehab, can we overlay this at the beginning of the video in case some people don't watch all the way to the end? And uh, at least they can still contact them. Yeah, I'm going to put down my uh, blog address and then people can kind of reach me there. And I'll also put in, uh, you can reach me at while you're doing that, somebody asks, where's the best place to buy that mat? Yes. Uh, uh, so cool what I mat. Do is, Amazon? Yeah, so the perfect, uh, I actually put it on there. So if you actually search out perfect sleep pad on Google, okay. uh, then, then that's going to be the best brand for kind of like the chili pad thing that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, best place to buy the mats. We're good. The chili pad, the CTO. Yeah, that was pretty much like the only, uh, that's pretty much like the only uh, question. So if you search out perfect sleep pad on google you should be able to find it cool awesome dan um that was a really good flow good conversation i, I appreciate the off the hip conversation and i'm really hoping that um people take action grab a calendar set a date maybe make it a public statement and tie it in with um some sort of charity or at least a race or something that way you can be accountable to that date and time and make it bigger than yourself Absolutely. definitely reach out to dan go because um it, sometimes it's easier to do things when you have a real coach who's helping you out with all of these things and keeping you accountable. I kind of want to get that um, scale to keep tracking the um, yeah. body fat. I think that'd be neat to know. Yeah. 
Yeah, so the Y things, I'll, I'll put it down here. Y things, uh, Nokia Smart Scale. And um, yeah, the Y things, Nokia Smart Scale is actually super cool. I think you're going to enjoy that one. Awesome. Dan, I really enjoyed this session. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang with us. So everyone, we're going to get this recording out. It gets posted up on Monday evening, and then I'll do another session and let you know what it is. Dan, we're going to include all of your information on the show notes and in the video so that people can reach out to you directly, uh, whether they tell you that it came from this video or not. Hopefully it does get you some people. And everyone hanging out, I'm going to stick around because uh, Shihab, can you grab all of the links before I close this meeting? Because it'll it'll clear the screen and you won't be able to copy it um yeah that's it everyone thanks so much bye thank you <laughs> see you then all right hey if you want to close more real estate transactions get more buyer leads and get more seller leads click this button right here it'll take you to our real estate group coaching page also if you like this video and want more you can subscribe by pressing this or you can check out some of my past videos here enjoy